Hello everyone, welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Good day everyone, we have our new topic in disaster readiness and rest reduction, which is all about the effects of different earthquake hazard. This will be a topic for quarter 3 and module number 4. The objectives of this lesson is to first analyze the effects of the different earthquake hazards, number two to interpret different earthquake hazards and maps, and the third one is to apply precautionary and safety measures before, during, and after an earthquake. Earthquake is a perceptible shaking of the surface of the earth which can be violent enough to destroy major buildings and kill thousands of people. The Philippines have been affected by more than 90 damaging earthquakes for the last 400 years. During the last 30 years, 5,400 people were killed and about 1.4 million were affected by strong earthquakes. Damage to properties by a single event can be significant. The July 16, 1990 in Northern Luzon earthquake caused 12.2 billion pesos worth of damages. The following are some potential earthquake hazards. Unsecured cabinet doors flying open during earthquakes. How do you keep cabinet doors closed during an earthquake? One way to prevent the accidental opening of drawers and cabinet doors is to install latches such as barrel bolts, safety haps, and child-proof locks. Most hardware and home supply stores stock a variety of latches. Another potential earthquake hazards are collectibles, pottery objects, and lumps becoming deadly projectiles. The following are the recommendations to secure them. First one is to move heavy items and breakables to lower shelves. Another recommendation is to secure smaller items in the place with non-damaging adhesives like available at the hardware stores or online. Another potential earthquake hazard is that mirrors, frame pictures, and other objects should be hung from closed hooks so that they can't bounce off the walls during an earthquake. Another potential earthquake hazards are television, stereo use, computers, and microwaves and other electronics are heavy and costly to replace. They can be secured with flexible nylon straps and buckles for easy removal and relocation. Another effect of earthquake hazard is ground rupture. Ground rupture is the movement of the ground along one side of the fault relative to the other side that caused by an earthquake. Shaking and ground rupture are the main effects created by earthquakes principally, resulting in more or less severe damage to buildings and other rigid structures. The severity of the local effects depend on the complex combination of the earthquake magnitude, distance from the epicenter, and the local geological and geomorphological conditions, which may amplify or reduce wave propagation. 
the ground shaking is measured by ground acceleration. Other causes of ground rupture are the following. First one is the sudden movement of one lithospheric plate passed to another. Another causes of rupture are the stresses in the Earth's crust, slippage, such as violent breaking shock waves. Another rupture is that Earth moving machinery and the last causes of rupture is the local faults. Another effects of earthquake hazards are liquefaction. Liquefaction is when the ground soil is mixed with the groundwater, causing the soil to become less stable and lose its strength. Liquefaction it is a phenomenon in which the strength and stiffness of a soil is reduced by earthquake shaking or other rapid loading liquefaction and related phenomena have been responsible for tremendous amounts of damage in historical earthquakes around the world To understand liquefaction, it is important to recognize the condition that exists in a soil deposit before an earthquake. A soil deposit consists of an assemblage of individual soil particles. If we look closely at these particles, we can see that each particle is in contact with a number of neighboring particles. The weight of the overlying soil particles produces contact forces between the particles. These forces hold individual particles in place and give the soil its strength. Another effect of earthquake hazards is earthquake-induced ground subsidence. It happens when objects sink or fall to the bottom caused by an earthquake. The following are the steps in conducting earthquake drill. The first step is the alarm phase. It is the minute alarm signifying a strong earthquake. The second step in conducting earthquake drill is the reaction. It is where the students do the response procedure during the earthquake. The third step in conducting earthquake drill is the evacuation phase. It is where the students quickly move out of, the, of their classrooms to go to designated evacuation or open areas. The fourth step in conducting earthquake drill is the assembly phase. It is where the students from the same class should group together to better facilitate the head count or accounting of the students. The fifth step in conducting earthquake drill is the head count phase. It is where the teacher advisor checks the number of students in class based on the daily attendance record. The sixth step in conducting earthquake drill is the drill termination. It is where the drill master should inform the participants that the drill has ended. And the last step 
in conducting earthquake drill is the post drill evaluation it is where assessing the conduct of drill is important for improving future activities So that's the end of our discussion. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.